In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys the whole process for how I handle leads from wedding wire, the knot, etc. What's up guys, it's Diedrich Webb. Welcome back to the channel. Today, like I said, we're gonna be going through leads and we're gonna go into detail. So first off, let me lay out the structure for this video. First things first, I'm gonna give a little bit of background to anyone that doesn't know about me and my company, Fusion Sound and Lighting. If you don't know anything about the structure and where I get all my leads, all that, I'm gonna go through that first. Then I'm gonna be walking you guys through how I respond to leads, like how I initially respond to any lead I get, as well as give you guys some pointers and some tips Tips on how these services like wedding wire and the knot how they actually run on the back end if you didn't already know then we're gonna get to the cool stuff which is my auto follow-up system which allows me to basically keep track of over 200 leads and follow up with them in a very timely manner without lifting a finger, which hint, hint is done in HoneyBook through automation. So let's jump into it. So for a quick background on my company, Fusion Sound and Lighting, if any of you guys are relatively new to the channel in the last couple of years and you didn't catch, so quick little brief background on my company, Fusion Sound and Lighting. This is my personal company. If any of you guys are old from the channel, you guys are OGs, you guys know that I originally was based in Ohio. I worked for another company in Ohio as well as doing some of my own stuff with school dances. And in mid 20 2018 around May I moved from Ohio to North Carolina and that is where I started Fusion Sound and Light. And I use this lead funnel structure system that I'm going to be talking about how I handle leads and everything to grow the company from 2018 basically being nothing. No referral networks, literally nothing. It, it was crazy. It was like basically restarting as DJ, going back to a beginner where no one knows who the hell you are or if you can DJ and you have to rebuild that reputation and start over. And throughout 2019 and even in COVID of 2020, I've been able to build the company with more and more revenue every single year. It's the point now where Fusion Sound Lighting is looking at a multi six figure revenue projection for 2021, which I am extremely proud of. With that said, there's a huge asterisk on that statement because of this thing known as COVID. A little side question for you guys. Would you guys like me to dive into more detail on that topic in a future video talking about how I basically moved from Ohio and started from the ground up like nothing and work my way up to where we are now. So if you guys would like that, leave it down in the comment section down below. And while you're at it, be sure to hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button too. Appreciate it. Now, as you can understand from the background of my company, my referrals were basically zero. So I had to rely heavily on paid leads for sources like Wedding Wire, The Knot, Wedding Shows. And even to this day, my number one uh, source for leads is still wedding wire. It's, it's incredible. It's actually still my number one source. Referrals is growing and it's growing very rapidly, but COVID kind of put a dent in those referrals because you know, you have to do events to get referrals and we're not doing events. So we're not getting referrals. We 2021 hopefully will change that and for most of you guys that are well established you guys probably know that referrals is your number one source of leads and your number one source of bookings but if you guys are looking to grow in the wedding wire and the knot space or if you're doing what i am trying to grow a company this lead funnel system will help you regardless. So let's jump into that system now. So the system of how I reply to leads starts initially with the first reply when you get a lead. And the biggest aspect of this is responding as quickly as you possibly can, especially if these leads are from wedding wire in the knot. And this is where I got a little pro tip for you guys, a little back end tip. If you've never really understood how wedding wire and the knot works let me give you some some pointers so on wedding wire and the knot when a couple goes to basically start planning their wedding on that website and look for vendors they can obviously search for djs they can search for other vendors as well and when they do that they will stumble upon whatever dj they want and actually a little side thing the reason why i know this is because i've actually gone on wedding wire and the knot and created a fake email address and basically seen what my competition is out there. I highly recommend that if you guys are not already doing it in your area, see what your competition is doing. Go on the way around the knot. It's really easy to do. Uh, create yourself an account and see what your competitors are doing. You can see what they're charging. It, it's really easy. Just do it. It's going to help you a lot in your business in terms of making sure that you're not undercharging. You're like, you're cutting off people. You don't want to be doing that and making sure that you're kind of where you want to be in terms of the market. But anyways, back to the point when a couple is on the wedding wire in the knot, when they basically find a DJ, so say they find fusion sound lighting and they inquiry for us, 
they're gonna basically fill out a little thing, they're gonna ask for a review, and then afterwards, and I'm gonna throw some screenshots up on the screen right now so that you guys know, once they submit to that one company, whatever company they select, Wedding Wire and the Nine are gonna automatically ask them if they would like to also inquiry for like the six or seven other DJs in the area that they think they'll be matched with and I'll give you a little hint on that too uh, Normally the people that pop up on that list are the ones that are paying the most amount of money to the wedding wire in the knot uh, Trust me the wedding wire in the knot's all about money So the more you're paying the more leads you're gonna get that's that's how it works So it allows the couple to select some other DJs that they want to get pricing inquiries from and this is why if you guys are on wedding wire in the knot you guys probably are familiar with seeing very generic responses like, hi, this is so-and-so, we would love to know more about your company. And that's because the wedding wire and the knot automatically generate those responses, which also leads to the point on being extremely fast. You are practically in competition with a bunch of other companies when you get a lead from wedding wire and the knot. These people are practically clueless in terms of what they want. Uh, from a DJ, they don't know anything about weddings. Obviously, they've never got married before, so they're on the wedding round the not trying to find vendors. So normally, the first one or two people to respond to the lead and to do it in a non-robotic, automatic fashion are the ones that are probably going to win that lead if that's the budget the couple's looking for. Again, first part of the system is to respond as soon as possible. Literally drop everything that you're doing unless you're doing a wedding. But if you are like in the middle of having a text conversation or you're emailing uh, a person that's already booked, just drop that. Like they're already booked. Go to the new person that the new lead, you need to drop everything and go respond to a lead. Like if I got a lead right now, I would literally stop filming this video and respond to that lead right now because that's how important it is. You literally have to be the first one to the ball like, it's so important. That's why literally on the wedding wire and the knot, they tell you on your profile how fast you are, your average response time. That also, I believe, factors into, none of this is proven, um, but you can know for a fact that the more money you pay to these companies, wedding wire and the knot, the more leads they're gonna give you. If you call and kind of bitch at them, you might get more leads as well. I've heard that before. There's all sorts of methods to this, and average response time is probably a factor into their algorithm on who gets the recommendations for uh, these couples. When they select one and they get all these recommendations of other companies to book, that's probably a factor that falls into it. Again, it's not proven, but it's something you need to know that uh, responding as fast as possible is the most important thing. If you learn anything from this video when you are getting leads, whether it's referrals or anything, be prompt and respond as fast as you possibly can. Which then brings me to the question of what do you send them? What is the reply? How do you respond to them? In responding to leads, you want to respond to them on all the sources you have available to respond to them. So when you get a lead, say from WeddingWire, WeddingWire is actually really good about giving you a phone number and an email most of the time. So what you wanna do is respond in the WeddingWire Messenger app on the WeddingWire site. You want to send them a text, you wanna send them an email, you wanna have as many sources coming to them for the possibility of them seeing your response. Every couple is different in terms of what is their preferred method of communication. A lot of times they'll tell you, but it's better to just respond with as many ways as possible. Send them an email, send them a text, send them a message in the messenger. Uh, I wouldn't call couples out of the blue. Nowadays, it's kind of frowned upon to just uh, like cold call couples uh, from a lead, especially like we saw on the wedding wire and the knot. A lot of times, these are just preferred uh, recommendations that they're giving the couples so they didn't necessarily want to learn more about your company they were just kind of inquiring and interested so you have to start that initial conversation and gain that trust with the couple before you jump on a call out of the blue with them so now what do you say in your reply to your couple and before we get into that, we actually gotta think about what is the goal we're, we're doing with these leads? What is the goal of these leads? What are we trying to get them to do? Obviously the goal is for them to book our services, but what action do we want the leads to do on their end first? For me personally, what I want is I want them to schedule a consultation. I want them to schedule a time where we can sit down and have a video call. In the past, it was setting up a, a place to go meet, maybe Starbucks or an office, etc. But uh, nowadays, COVID and all, that it's transformed to all online video meetings and honestly I see this staying around for a long time it's a lot less invasive and it's uh, a lot easier to do and it's quicker too 
You can do multiple meetings back to back to back to back to back sitting in your office. And uh, I've actually been doing it prior to COVID and it's worked out really well. So I'm trying to get them to schedule a time for a video consultation. That's my goal. So with the goal in mind, what do we actually reply to the leads? And this is one of the biggest areas that I see a lot of DJs both in my area and across the nation failing at. The initial reply is one of the most critical first pieces of communication you have with a lead. And the best advice I can say is use the KISS approach to the max. For anyone that doesn't know, that means keep it short and simple. For me personally, it's literally as simple as, hey, this is Rick from Fusion Sound Lighting. I just got your inquiry. We are available on your date. And then I kind of have a different variance of how I can go with it. So for me personally, I reply differently on all the different sources that I have available. So that way it doesn't seem robotic and copy and paste. And also that helps with the KISS approach. You don't want your response to seem like it's a template. You don't want it to seem very generic. You want it to seem like you actually typed it out. A lot of us, including myself, do use automatic follow-ups and templates, but you want to make those templates not these freaking eight, lo eight paragraph long explaining why your company is amazing and what equipment you use and how couples love you and blah, 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 blah. They don't care. They clicked on you. They can see your reviews online. They can see that. They can go to your website. They can view this stuff. You don't have to put an eight paragraph or three paragraph response that explains why you're awesome. They can look into it and they can figure that out for themselves. So going back to the wedding wire example, there's three different ways I'm going to communicate with this leader, the initial communication that I have. So inside of the messenger app, I normally send them a, hey, this is Rick from Fusion Sound and Lighting. We are available on your date, whatever it is, May 17th, 2022. I make sure to put their specific date. That's one of those things that helps make you not seem robotic and automated. Do that. And then I put one quick sentence that basically says, have you got a chance to see the videos of us in action on our website and on our YouTube channel, question mark, and then links to our website and our YouTube channel. I'm trying to send them to a source that allow them to watch some video, learn more about us and see kind of our work, see how we operate. There's also a little bit of pricing info on there. And my website is set up in a way that it is a funnel to try and get them to schedule a consultation. Like we said, is my goal. Now, when I text them, texting is normally very, very short conversations. So I am very, very brief and short. And most people know that texts aren't automated, especially when you're texting from a real number and not an automated text number. So my response is very simple. It says, hey, this is Rick from Fusion Sound Lighting. I got your inquiry on Wedding Wire. I wanted to see what quick questions you have or what quick questions do you have, question mark. Very simple, very short, just trying to get them to respond and give me some more detail. Again, KISS approach. You don't want to give away all the info about your company up front. You want them to be able to ask questions and start a dialogue, start a conversation so that way it builds a relationship and also you're addressing what their exact concerns are. You don't want to put this eight paragraph text or this eight paragraph email that answers all their questions that they might have because then you don't have a conversation with them. You don't know how serious they are. You don't know anything about their wedding. Again, keep it short, keep it simple. Now the last form of communication, the email response is again, very similar. Hi, it's Rick from Fusion Sound and Lighting. We are available on your date, May 17th, 2022. I have some upcoming consultation slots available. If you could click the link below and select a time that would work best for you. Can't wait to talk to you. And then there's a link below to my Calendly. A little side plug, if none of you guys know what Calendly is, Google it or leave it down in the comment section down below. If you guys are, if any, if there's a lot of people that are curious as to what Calendly is and you don't know what it is, it's free and it's amazing. So if you don't know what it is, let me know in the comments below and I will make a video dedicated to Calendly, but it is awesome. It's basically a tool that allows people to go schedule meetings based on your availability and you get to set that all up. It's awesome. So that's the first step, the initial reply as quick as possible. And yes, all of those are relatively templates, but like I said, the goal is to make them not seem robotic, not seem automated. Uh, so my templates kind of have blanks and I go in there and I fill them in. 
And that is pretty much the only manual step I do in this follow-up sequence because the initial response, like I said, couples are looking for non-robotic responses. I, I hate to say it, but that is what they're looking for. They're not looking for these big, long robotic responses. They're looking to start a conversation. They're planning a wedding. You, you gotta put your mind in the mindset of a couple. They've never got married before. Most of them haven't. So they have no idea relatively what a wedding DJ does or how they operate or what you offer or what DJs do or lighting. If they know anything about a wedding DJ, you are in luck because that means they actually know a little thing or two about what we do and why we cost what we cost. But for 90% of the leads and the couples I talk to, they are completely clueless and they're looking for a conversation and they're looking to learn what wedding DJs do. Note why my goal is to have them schedule a consultation so we can discuss this. So I send out the initial reply to the leads and if they book a consultation, yay! But nine times out of 10, we're either gonna get a response or they're not gonna reply. I hate to break it to you, which means we have to follow up with these leads. We have to continue to follow up, which brings me to the next stage in the lead system that I have. Following up with leads can be quite the daunting task, which is why I highly recommend you implement some sort of automatic follow-up into your lead system. For me personally, I do that through a CRM, a client relations manager known as HoneyBook. If you don't know anything about HoneyBook, we're gonna show it on the screen a little bit, but I'm not gonna be going really in depth at all because I have a whole playlist on my channel. So if you go to my channel and go to the playlist, it'll be linked in the description down below as well as the first comment below as well. But I made multiple videos on HoneyBook explaining what it is. It allows you to manage all of your clients, all of your couples and their individual projects and track them throughout the lead system as well as booked, planning, and completed. It's really awesome, it allows you to send brochures and make pricing and invoices and contracts and everything, it's awesome. Go check out that playlist if you want more info on that. So now if we go over to the computer screen, I can show you guys how I handle leads in HoneyBook. So whenever I get a lead, the first thing I'm gonna do is go up here to the top right and click new project, cause I have a new wedding. And now it's gonna prompt me for the name of the project. I'm just gonna call this Nikki. So that's say the bride's name is Nikki. I'm gonna go to my categories here. This is a wedding. The source is from Wedding Wire. And the date, I'm gonna do that May 17th, 2022. I've been using this whole entire video. So once you click create project, it brings you to this screen right here. And I cut the video a little bit because I didn't wanna give out any information because it automatically provides suggestions based on my Google inbox. So I've cut basically, and pre-filled in all the info so you guys can see how this works. But basically, you type in the email address. So I put rickweb at gmail.com. That is not an actual email that I own. Rick, and then I also put in a random phone number. That is not my phone number. So again, not trying to leak info. There's info in the description down below though. Click add. So this is adding the contact info. We're gonna click add real quick. So now inside of the project, we have the contact info for the wedding. We can also put in the projects. Uh, location. So I'm gonna put Splendor Pond. Splendor Pond. That's a local venue. That's where I did the sound install. If you guys didn't know, it's over in Mooresville. Next thing I'm gonna do is go over to the right here and click on my stage. These are all the stages that a lead can be in, all the way to basically a completed wedding. Um, so they are in the initial stage of follow up. I'm gonna change it to there. It tells us the lead source. We can add some notes in there. I can add my other DJs, Marcellus, Drake, Adam to the project. But what I'm gonna do is add a workflow. So I have a variety of different workflows already made. Go check out the playlist if you wanna learn more about them in detail. But for this, we're a lead. So this is a lead, so I have an eight step funnel for an initial lead. So I'm gonna click on apply the lead workflow. And what a workflow is, is basically a sequence of tasks, whether it's a task that I have to physically do, an automated email, sending a brochure, etc. Again, go check out the workflows to learn more about how these are, but basically it's a sequence of tasks related to this, this lead. What are the sequence of tasks? So I have set up and created those sequences and that is the sequence that you see on the screen here. So the initial thing that I'm doing with a lead is the first two items. So first things first, we're gonna send them an email. So if I click on view edit, this right here is the initial email that I'm sending the couple, the lead. This is the initial email. So it basically, just like I showed you guys earlier, like, hey Rick, it's confusing because my name is Rick, but it automatically puts in the client's name right there. So hey Rick, I just got your inquiry and we are available on blank. This is where I would 
delete this and put in a 17th 2022. So with the initial email sent, we can now see the next task, which is what I've told you guys, text and reply on the messenger for the knot and wedding wire. So do that. Those are my first two initial tasks. And you can see there, it describes when these are going to come up. Uh, like I said, you create this whole lead sequence in the workflows in HoneyBook. Go check out my other videos on details on that. Then the follow-up sequence continues from there. And this is my initial lead follow-up sequence. This is when I get a lead. This is the workflow that applies to them. And the goal of this workflow is to get them to talk to me. Initially, send them the email, send the task. If they don't reply, the next day they're going to get an email that says the following. Hey Rick, I sent you an email yesterday. I just want to make sure it didn't go to spam and you got it, did you get it, etc. And uh, then I use a little clever sent from iPhone so it makes it look like I sent it from a phone so it's not robotic. Like I said, the key is to make these emails, these automated emails seem not robotic. So sent that out, then uh, after that there's an email sent the next day after that the next day after that. And all these are little follow-up emails like, hey, I got your inquiry, you didn't reply. Hey, I got your inquiry. Hey, have you seen the videos on our website yet? They're all little clever, short and sweet kiss replies that you can send them that don't seem robotic. Basically, I'm sending them very aggressively um, a text and an email every single day. A text, a messenger, again, just trying to get them to reply. Remember, we're in competition with all the other people that got the same lead you did. So it's not hurting you because they haven't replied. They inquired with you. Remember that they inquired with you. You're reaching out for them to give them the info that they want and they're not responding. So I'm pretty aggressive until they actually reply to me. And you'll see at the bottom of this workflow that it says, lastly here, transfer to follow up send pricing for DJ. And uh, I have multiple workflows like I talked about for all the different sequences. And the goal of this, like I said, is to get them to reply. Once they reply, they either go for one of two directions. They either go to brochure sent because a lot of times they reply and they just want to know pricing info. Then I transfer them the pricing. I send them a brochure so that they can see the pricing. And then there's a whole nother follow-up sequence that follows another workflow for that. And that is not nearly as aggressive as this. It's kind of like once every two to five days, I'm either texting them or sending them an email with more info about us, et cetera, or they get a meeting. And in the meeting, we're gonna go over pricing there. And typically they get a proposal and there's another workflow for that. I'm not gonna go into detail on those in this video, uh, that would just take way too much time. But at the end of my aggressive lead sequence, this is literally like a week worth of trying to get them to reply to me. If they don't reply to me, they will still go to brochure sent. I will still send them a brochure and be like, hey, I've been trying to reach out to you. I haven't got a response yet. I just want to get you pricing info. See it in the email down below. And sometimes that normally sparks a conversation. A lot of times couples tend to be hesitant to not reply. I don't know why, sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. You'll learn this when you start replying to a lot of different leads. Every lead's different and you can't get worked up about leads. This is one tip I gotta give you a lot of you guys because it happened to me when I first started the company back in 2018. I used to get worked up about leads that weren't responding or why are they not responding? You, you basically need to establish a system and just follow the system. Once I did that, it is effortlessly for me to manage leads. I don't worry about leads. Leads come to me and they go. Sometimes they book, sometimes they don't. You're not gonna book every single lead. Just a little pro tip. So if I back back up into the project itself, we'll see on the right here that the task window has now populated with the initial task that we have not done yet, which is send the initial message or text on wedding wire the knot. So once you do those, you would click this button and the task would be done. And this is the task window specific to this project. So if you wanted to add a task, add a task like follow up tomorrow about uplighting, say they responded about uplighting and you wanted to create an automatic task so you remember, you can do that. And you can reply to them on Tuesday. So this is going over the initial lead, how I follow up with the lead and the workflow I have established. Now you gotta remember, as I showed you, I have workflows for every stage in the project. So if I go to my project window, you'll see that I have 213 active projects between leads, booked, etc. And all of these projects throughout this, these stages that you see here have workflows attached to them, which means I don't have to worry about every single project, whether they're booked, whether they're a lead, wherever, I don't have to worry about them because the workflows are going to automatically tell me what I need to do in my task window. 
which is the best part about establishing a CRM with automation. So to give you a quick glimpse of what that looks like, if I go to home, you'll see in the upper right corner, I have my task window and you'll see that there are 13 tasks due today and there are 1,422 upcoming tasks. And those are all the tasks that are automatically generated from the workflows. There's a whole bunch of other automated emails tied to that. Um, th those are just the tasks that are gonna pop up that are things that I need to do. Now remember, there's 213 active projects, so you divide it up, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that I probably won't have to actually do. But when I click on the task window, it brings me to all the tasks that are due today. These are all the tasks that have been automatically generated that are due today. At the top, this is a bunch of COVID related stuff that we need to follow up on because people postpone all that fun stuff. But towards the bottom, we can see the current stuff and you can see the task that is due. You can see the project and you can actually go to these projects, which is pretty helpful. And you can see what workflow is attached to it. So the workflow is on the right. So you see 2020 DJ Marcellus book, 2020 DJ Rick book, 2020 long term, 2020 bro to percent etc. There's actually no task today related to the lead funnels that I have, but this gives you a glimpse. Basically, I go in here and I perform those tasks. So say here at the bottom, it says text. Thanks for chatting yesterday. Want to see if you want a proposal. This might be one of the ones that I will actually click on the project. I'll go to it and see if there was some things that we talked about prior that I don't want to say in that text combo that I have. Like I said, the best part about this is I don't have to worry about all the leads. It makes your business super efficient and allows you to manage a crap ton of leads at the same time without thinking about it. It makes it effortless. So that right there, guys, is a look at how I handle leads, how I respond to them, and the initial stages of the lead. I can't stress enough how you need to reply as fast as you possibly can, especially if you're using sources like Wedding Wire and The Knot because you actually are in competition with a lot of other vendors in your area to get those leads. So respond as fast as you possibly can. Keep it short and simple in your responses. You don't wanna come off as robotic. You wanna come off as a human being, even though we're using a lot of automated features, robotic features on the back end. You want to keep it short and sweet. And the most important part is follow-up. And manual follow-up is something you can do. It is a little hard to do, especially when you get to the point where you're handling a lot of leads, which is why I love using powerful features like HoneyBook Automations to do that. And I could go into way more detail on HoneyBook, and if you guys are interested in it, I highly recommend you go check out my other playlist that I've made on HoneyBook, the other videos I've made going into more detail on brochures, brochures, contracts, all that, how HoneyBook accepts payments too so they can pay you for HoneyBook. It's awesome, you can manage all your products. It's great, I can't stress it enough. And if you guys are actually interested, if none of you guys are on HoneyBook, you can try it for free. There's a link in the description down below. You can literally sign up for free and try out HoneyBook for I believe it's a week and you can see if you like it. You can mess around with it, create some email templates, create some workflows, and test it out. So link to that in the description down below. And if you're maybe one of the people that subscribed to me and you already joined HoneyBook and you love it, but uh, you're kind of curious, you've seen some of the automations I do. I, I'm pretty much a powerhouse user uh, on it. And you want to pick my brain, you want to talk, have a little one-to-one -one session, or anything really, you can schedule a consultation with me. There is a slight fee for that for my time. There's a link down in the description down below to my Calendly where you can schedule a time to pick my brain. We can talk about workflows, we can talk about tasks. I can show you exactly what I'm using on mine. I can take a look at what you got and give you some suggestions. So uh, if any of you guys are interested in that, link to that in the description down below as well. And with that said guys, I wanna thank you guys for watching this video. If you are still watching at this point, please leave a comment down below to let me know that you made it to this point. Leave a thumbs up, hit the thumbs up button. It helps the channel tremendously. Hit the subscribe button so you can see all of the new videos that are gonna be coming to the channel. And uh, follow me on Instagram for more info and all that fun jazz. But uh, like always guys, keep the record spinning and I will see you guys next time. Peace.